Removing two dams at this scale had not really happened prior to the Elwha, and it's literally a living laboratory. So you have a, a river system that's intact from its headwaters to the ocean. I think there is kind of one species to me that has stuck out, one life history of fish that is really a remarkable story more so than others. And that are the summer steelhead of the Elwha River. It was thought that they were basically extinct and now they're coming back in numbers that are very impressive. These fish, they're like the phoenix. They've risen from the ashes. This project wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Trout Unlimited and the Lower Elwha tribe. And it evolved into, well, if we're gonna go all the way up there and do this summer steelhead work, let's sample the whole river again. This will be our fourth time in the Elwha. We, we did a riverscape in 2007 and 2008 before the dams came out. And uh, that gave us kind of a neat baseline as to what the trout and fish populations looked like prior to dam removal. Our goal, going back a decade or so, was to create an atlas of riverscapes in the Olympic Peninsula. And so we've been um, chipping our way around the different systems. These surveys are, are very intensive, obviously, 43 miles in five days. We have four teams composed of researchers from the Olympic National Park, the Lower Elwha Column Tribe, NOAA, Fish and Wildlife Service, Trout Unlimited. It's a big collaboration. So the plan for this particular Elwha Riverscape is more of a focus on a summer steelhead, but also to include any other species we observe throughout the watershed. It's a nice size fish. It's like a girl. I walked into this week a little bit scared. And this year, the returns of steelhead appear to be pretty poor along much of the West Coast. There will be two teams heading upriver into the upper watershed and two teams staying below, um, kind of in the front country. I've seen some other predictions about fish recovery taking 100 years or 300 years to come back and see numbers again like we're seeing here. The first couple years, the river was full of sediment. And then also there are some passage issues in the first couple years after dam removal. So it's only really been a few years that the rivers had good conditions for these fish to come back. So it's just super rapid. The thing that's amazing about summer steelhead in the Elwha is that they were trapped for 100 years as rainbow trout above the dam. We have a steelhead that we found that died probably of some natural cause. Right now we're going to take the otolus out of the fish's head and otolus are little tiny ear bones. And the otolith carries chemical signatures and we can determine from the otolith whether the mom of this steelhead was a resident rainbow trout or another steelhead. And so what we're interested in here in the Elwha's We've had this real resurgence of summer steelhead, and we're interested in what their origin is. Are they coming from other steelhead, or are they coming from rainbow trout that were lion locked above the dams? And summer steelhead overall are generally struggling pretty badly in a lot of places, but they're struggling mostly in these coastal watersheds that we have, these kind of short, steep streams that drain the coast range. We have four one kilometer reaches where we're electrofishing just the right bank margin of the river. 
I've been a part of electrofishing as a way of uh, sampling juvenile salmonids. I've been seeing a lot of bull trout, rainbow trout, steelhead, some chinook. The trout densities are increasing um, even more, and the bull trout, their body sizes and forms are, they look a lot healthier than they did pre, pre dam removal. I know you're excited. <laughs> This is a very tight, narrow canyon reach, which makes sense that summer steelhead would like that. So it's going to be exciting to see what we see in here. So I've worked on this river system and the dam removal in one way, shape, or form for 15 years, but I hadn't actually spent time on the river looking at the fish until today. there in numbers. They were super healthy. It just cemented for me the, uh, the reality. It's incredibly powerful to see a river come back to life. And I got to witness that today. And uh, it really puts wind in my sails. And I'm completely stunned at what we saw. So we counted more fish this year just in the upper river than they did last year in the entire survey for the whole Elwha. There's been no hatchery to jumpstart that population. They've done it on their own. That just shows you their plasticity and the life history expression. If we open up the habitat for them, they're gonna come back. Summer steelhead recolonization has happened so fast naturally, and they've definitely been the champion fish of Elwha restoration. There's already a lot of evidence that shows the power of opening up river systems. And you think about the large dam removals that have happened, and we're seeing fish respond and the ecosystem respond faster, frankly, than many people expected. And those benefits aren't just for the fish. You know, the skepticism, I think, is becoming harder to buy as time goes on, and we have examples of success. And in my lifetime, I don't think I've ever had more hope for the future than I do now.